Uh, I don't know who you are or how you know these things. But one thing I'm sure of, you're in the wrong job. Here, call me tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'd like to hear more from you. Are you ready for your big break? The East African, understanding the region. This is NTV and uh, Tuesday 9th September 2014 and this is NTV at one a day's fast bulletin. My name is Malcolm Sime. Let's uh, go straight to the headlines this hour. I'm interested in democracy, development and justice. That's what I'm interested in. Let's focus on a winning candidate. VP Party President Norbert Mao speaks out since recovery. When I just had people without jobs, Also coming up, police arrest several people in a city demo over unemployment. And bracing for us, the World Health Organization warns of a huge spike in Ebola outbreaks in Liberia. Details on these and more stories on NTV at 1. Welcome to NTV at 1 and the police in Kampala has arrested at least five people protesting against high unemployment. The three youths who were arrested in Katwe uh, as they registered the job, jobless as well as those evicted from Rio Reserve. Another two were arrested from Constitutional Square. And uh, Santongo, uh, one Santongo, one of the demonstrators, says that the plan is to carry out protests countrywide. So we are here to make a head count. Since the government census has flopped, they will not give us a clear picture of how many people are unemployed in Uganda. So we are going to enumerate ourselves and we come out with a correct number. I'm a police officer. Why did you get the power? No, we are not, we are not, we are not supposed to ask for the power. Stand up, stand up, stand up. What is the use of this placard? This placard is for mobilizing people who are unemployed. Did you get permission? That is my question. We don't need to get permission. We didn't get any permission to just. We're moving now. No, we didn't get any permission. We're moving. That's what I'm saying. It is the government right to employ all of us as stipulated in the constitution. We want jobs. 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 Not gotten jobs up to now. 
The government should hunt us. We used to wear the majority. If you look at the constitution, that you should provide a double point. seems to have a point a group of a group of uh, former students challenging government on the rates of unemployment which has been put at near 83 percent so far and you will think that they must have a point the number of census enumerators in Busia district has withheld the data collected in the counting exercise over the delay in getting their pay the angry enumerators uh, turned up at the sub-county headquarters demanding their wages but authorities at the Uganda Bureau of Statistics say they will be paid within one week we're supposed to have received uh, some facilitation of 50,000 for, for the training. We did not get. They had promised us when we were getting the appointment letters that in two days' time we shall get the money. We have been in the field for more than 10 days. Today we have come back to submit the documents that are telling us stories. He does not want to, to, to listen to us. He thinks that we are opposing him. Some of us have been up uh, on our arms right from the beginning because we know we are what we are supposed to get. We are not supposed. We are not privileges. They actually we are doing our work. They are not paying us for free. The guy is quarrelling as if he's going to pay us using his own money. Mm. In the process of submitting these documents, it's supposed to be like kind of exchange. I give you the documents. If you approve them, you give me my money. I go. If there is no clear communication, we have no problem. We can stay with the documents. When the money comes, we, we bring back their documents. I don't mind of this 200 because I already have the appointment letter for it. But the other one that is not documented is the man I want. Without that, I'm not handing over the material. In our final Highland of Hope series, Solomon Kawesa explores the nightlife of a village in Muvenda district where scores of residents have settled to mine gold. <laughs> It is about 6.30 p.m. in this remote village in Mubende district where hundreds of people settled to mine gold. The miners start heading back home as the sun sets after spending laborious hours at work. This town comes alive when the sun goes down, especially for those who made a kill during the day. <laughs> Drinking, dancing and other recreational activities are what the locals opt for to relieve themselves of the stress of working at the mines. Those who like the bottle share challenges and ideas with their drink mates at the bars. <coughs> Other revelers who don't drink choose to wind down by playing pool and watching movies at the local cinema halls. Lots of things happen in this area under the cover of darkness. One that caught my eyes was the number of sex workers moving about waiting for the loaded men to spend on them. I took a walk to one of the area's lodges and pretended to be a customer. <laughs> I was kept off her claims of being one of the ladies of the night. I soon realized that every lodge has a sex worker who most men want to sleep with. Earlier in the day, I interacted with a doctor who attributed the rise in the sexually transmitted diseases to the large number of sex workers in this area. I asked about it to be assured of my safety 
Never never said you are going to go back to your old pier. See me, Babu Rita. Babu Rita, you go more than a boxing idea. Stay good. Every woman who uses this lodge pays a certain amount of money to this lady, which she, however, declined to disclose to me. It's about 1 a.m. in the morning, and as you can see, people in Kampala are still moving on the streets, and some are still even playing pool, and we went inside there, and, and so many were still drinking. That's the kind of life people live in this place from Monday to Monday. Even as we're leaving this place at about 3 in the morning, we met more miners coming back home from their night shift. Solomon Kawesa, NTV. Thank you, Solomon. Let's now take a short break and NTV at one still has more stories that are making headlines this afternoon. Use White Star Laundry Bath Soap with a lemon fragrance and you'll have a fresh, clean day. Be like a star. Use White Star. White Star Laundry Bath Soap. All day fresh, clean. Next episode brought to you by At Orange. We know you want to do more on the internet. That's why we bring you happy hour, day and night. Destiny River. Victor. Max, what are you doing here? What are you doing in my home? Pick up that vine rope over there and hand it to me, please. He is not promptly killed by the curse of LaRue. Both of us will die. The last remaining Karoo. Can you please go get me, Sirso? You can download movies at the lowest prices and never fast from Orange. Dial star 133 hash to buy a data bundle. Happy hour changes with Orange. Today changes with Orange. Welcome back. This is MTV at one and the Democratic Party President Norbert Mao has vowed to take on a new challenge that would propel the party to power. And uh, he also urged the opposition to consider rallying behind one candidate in order to beat the ruling NRM party. Mao was speaking for the first time, uh, first time several weeks after fall falling ill and he said he was treated for pneumonia and hepatitis B. As we plan to to liberate the country, our struggle for freedom and justice and development, genuine development, should continue. Some people think we should just be patient and allow this government to collapse. Some people say the government is very weak anyway, they are divided, let it collapse. It will collapse on us. I think it is better to push it away. It is actually possible to unite this country. The only thing over which, over which we don't seem to agree is position. We should not start saying, is Mao suitable to be the joint opposition flag bearer? We should instead say, what sort of person is suitable to be our joint flag bearer? 
Then we look for that person. It is not true that any poison was found in my blood. DP President Norbert Mao, let's now have a look at an update on Ebola. The World Health Organization has warned that Liberia is said to see a huge spike in infections from the deadly virus uh, ravaging West Africa with thousands of new cases imminent. The United Nations Agency said the country was hit in the outbreak with over 1,000 deaths, faced many thousands of new infections in the next three weeks. He said in a statement, the World Health Organization and its Director General will continue to advocate for more Ebola treatment beds in Liberia and elsewhere and will hold the world accountable for responding to this dire emergency with its unprecedented dimensions of human suffering. The deadliest Ebola epidemic the world has ever seen is spreading across West Africa with Liberia, Guinea and Sierra Leone, the country's worst affected. The death toll has topped 2,000 out of nearly 4,000 people affected. Before the outbreak, Liberia had only one doctor to treat every 100,000 patients in a total population of 4.4 million people. Now that 152 healthcare workers in the country have been affected and 79 have died, the World Health Organization said the ratio had worsened significantly. The UN estimates that need at $600 million immediately. WHO has a clear roadmap for the process. The minimum to expect is that Africa comes in solidarity for this emergency package to be implemented without any more hesitations. Time is pressing. That is the real solidarity. And the Cameroonian government has said its soldiers had killed over 100 Boko Haram fighters during an attempted incursion by the Nigerian best fighters into its territory. The Cameroonian army has dealt a severe setback to Boko Haram. Government spokesman Issa Tishiroma Bakari said in a statement read out on state radio yesterday, urging that the clashes took place in north of the country on Saturday. It was not immediately possible to independently verify the information. Meanwhile, Dutch experts are due to publish a highly anticipated preliminary report into what brought down Malaysian flight MH17 over eastern Ukraine in July. The Malaysia Airlines Boeing MH17 exploded over eastern Ukraine en route from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, killing all 298 passengers on board, including 193 Dutch citizens. The air crash team will release its report on the website of the Dutch Safety Board today. Hundreds of people attended the burial of the former Minister of Agriculture, Samuel Mugwisa, at his ancestral home in Kanamba village, Mitiana district. Mugwisa died of pro prostate cancer last weekend at the Kampala hospital after battling the disease for many years. He was a stalwart supporter of the Uganda People's Congress Party and the Minister of Agriculture in the Obotetu regime. <laughs> A multitude of mourners turned up at Kanamba village in Mitiana to bid farewell to Samuel Mugwisa, the former agriculture minister in the Obote regime. <laughs> speaker after speaker, they praised Mugwisa for the good deeds he exhibited in the country. These are the people we struggle with to make sure that you are free to join any party of your choice. Bishop Wilson Mutebi of Mitiana Diocese was the main celebrant at the ceremony. Samuel Mugwisa passed on last weekend at the International Hospital in Kampala. He was a staunch UPC supporter. He died of prostate cancer, a disease he battled for four years. May he saw rest in peace. Let's now have a look at Sports England made the perfect start to their Euro 2016 qualifying campaign as two second half strikes from Arsenal's uh, 16 million pound New boy dubbed the new drug band England hitman Daniel Robeck gave them victory in Switzerland. And Croce's Marin uh, Cilic won his first Grand Slam title with a comprehensive uh, straight sets win over Kei Nishikori of Japan at the US Open. Let's have a report. Roy Hodgson believes England have been building towards the type of performance they put in during a 2-0 victory over Switzerland. 
The three Lions opened their European qualifiers campaign in Basel and left with three impressive points as a Danny Welbeck brace got them off to the best possible start. England, adopting a diamond formation from the off, were much improved from their friendly showing against Norway, with pace and power causing problems for the hosts. Hodgson maintains that he never questioned such a display was possible, even after a disappointing showing at the World Cup finals in Brazil, with the young squad still a work in progress as it takes aim at the 2016 European Championship in France. Meanwhile, the U.S. Open final that nobody predicted and not everyone wanted was seized by Croatian giant Marin Cilic last night to carve himself an unlikely place in history. The number 14 seed completed his third consecutive straight sets win to defeat a somewhat overwhelmed Kei Nishikori 6-3, 6-3, 6-3. 14th seed dominated throughout on a cool, breezy day in New York, hitting 17 aces and dropping serve just once in 1 hour and 54 minutes. His victory completes a Grand Slam year that has seen eight different winners of the singles titles across the men's and women's games for the first time since 1998. It feels amazing. I mean, there are no words to describe it and for sure my life is going to be completely different now. You know, traveling all over the world, uh, playing a tournament after tournament, it's difficult to always find motivation. But over here at New York, I found just some inner peace, uh, some joy in, in my tennis around my team and uh, it was, I, f I feel, the, the perfect formula. And that's in sport, but let's now cross over now to Studio B where uh, experts Ismail Dakawa Chigongo and uh, Aaron Darren will be expecting Gromasi to come on. They also have a surprise guest for you who is a seasoned uh, sports commentator and a professional at that now. Uh, Ismail, Let's just first give me a brief about Danny Welbeck. Will he be able to show the same form when Arsenal take on? What is their next game? Uh, you will be telling us that. Do you think Welbeck is the man now? Uh, Arsenal has been worried about Giroud not really uh, putting the ball in the net as they expected him to do on several occasions. But he has stand up. He has scored pretty good goals. But in Welbeck, do you see a striker that Arsenal needs to have? Uh, good afternoon, Malcolm. Um, I've got to say, and I've got to be very honest about this, uh, I find Welbeck extremely limited. I don't but think you're going to be honest that, as well. Uh, he's never <laughs> had a chance to play in his preferred position as Manchester United because he always played either the second strike or coming off the left flank. Mm. Now at Arsenal, he's going to get his best chance uh, to play as a centre forward uh, starting on uh, Saturday against Manchester City. Mm. I don't think Arsene Wenger has pleased anyone by signing Welbeck uh, because he's not the kind of player the stature of a player they needed, even if they needed a centre for a 12 for Olivier Giroud. And I can imagine if Olivier Giroud had been injured, well, they could still be at United. A smile, a smile. Uh, as an actual <laughs> fan, you, you, you cannot really take well the kid. But let's no, no, so focus on the Cranes Guinea game. Um, th there are a lot of uh, hopes now in the Ghana Cranes game, uh, especially after uh, you know holding Ghana to a draw. We everyone expected Ghana with their sleek passing to take on the Cranes and score about five goals. That did not happen, and uh, now we come against uh, <coughs> a, a Guinea side that um, beat um, a Togo, um, you know, a well play well organized Togo side, and you can. You believe me too if I say Togo is a little bit stronger than the Uganda Cranes. Um, now, how do you expect the Uganda Cranes to fare against Guinea? And what is the update now as far as the preparations uh, with Metro are concerned? Uh, last evening after the team returned from, uh, uh, from Kumasi on Sunday night, they were training uh, at Nambol at 7.30 p.m. And the engineers will be there training later today at 7.30 p.m. And that should help uh, the coach, Milton <laughs> Sredejevic, to get his side right. I've got to say that I was pleased with the aftermath of the game in Kumasi. While we were ex excited about the one point, the words coming out of Micha and Andy Mwesiga represent that just, that's just one game out of six, and there's five to go. But I've got to say, Malcolm, that finally, that that point in Kumasi is only relevant and only relevant if Uganda Cranes win tomorrow's game. If you don't win tomorrow's game, then that point becomes irrelevant, the one they got in Ghana. Where we have individual, this place is Bangura, everyone will be looking at Ismail Bangura, and then Mr. Zayate, who has played in the Premier League. But anyway, we expect uh, you, uh, you and team to give us, uh, you know, updates, uh, more updates on the Guinea and Uganda cranes again. And of course, fixtures and uh, as far as the Premier League is concerned, the fans are waiting. Omumuri Gwevia Mizanyo coming up next. Enjoy your afternoon. This was NTV at 1.